Not sure how I found this. I guess I was that bored and lost in the darkest corners of Manga Plus. When suddenly it appeared to me. And I just gave it a shot. Can't say I regret it. In fact, I enjoyed reading East Into the Night quite a bit. Now, personally, I would not put it ever on the same level as the vertical world. Maybe it's more of a hidden stone than a gem. But, who knows, had it not been axed, it could have been great. Yes, unfortunately this manga is not complete and it will never be. Which I only found out once reached the 12th and last chapter. So it's a pretty short read, but a sweet one. Truly a pity considering that it's by no means a masterpiece. Still, good enough to keep you interested. The concept especially is very intriguing. In a distant future, the darkness and silence of a never-ending night reign supreme. There is no light other than fires lit here and there, in houses or carried along by travelers. The environment is all rocky and dry. Of course, no day, no sunshine means no vegetation. Animals have adapted accordingly by having no eyes, and some humans have them bigger. Or so I thought. It's just the art style. But not all is lost. Anag, a traveler from the west, is in search of something vague called mourning, which has been lost in time, so long ago that nobody in fact remembers or has any idea what it is. But according to him, morning could end night. And his journey brings him to Tio, a huntress that soon joins him on the voyage to discover the truth of a world that seems to be hiding dangerous secrets in its darkness. East into the Night is a heavily plot-driven story, which at times disregards its characters. But it's totally fine. The mystery is what carried my interest going forward into the chapters. The concept of its world which I found fascinating and original. Why is it all dark? Are these humans just underground or in a cave? What's above their heads? The manga does a great job at balancing questions while providing the reader with answers and information on the situation of the world. And these inputs are never complete because of the darkness surrounding its past, which is also accompanied by a rather lazy ignorance of its people, who are okay with living in such conditions and they cannot be blamed either as they have known nothing more than that, thinking it normal. In addition to being manipulated by the fire god cult, East into the Night highlights the dangers of ignorance coupled with an ill-willed religion that finds in uneducated people a fertile field to exploit. And naturally, such a cult would spread worldwide thanks to the importance of fire in a dark and endless night that is portrayed so well in the lights bouncing off the rocks of the environment or the bodies of people. Xenophobia is another element characterizing such a close and narrow-minded world, constricted by all these rocks. Anag is an unlucky guy who's always looked at with fear and suspiciousness for being different because of the hair color and marks on his face. And he does hide a couple of more secrets as well, like relics, objects from the past, forbidden by the fire god for whatever reason, which is pretty sus. Not only can relics be found pretty much anywhere on the land, but they also seem to tell a story the main religion would like to bury deep and erase from the world's memory by throwing them into the fire along with destroying the ruins of perhaps an old civilization which still stand here and there. Leads to these mornings seem to be connected to the relics and especially to Anak's past and his dreams, 
which have very important clues that are unfortunately unanswered because of the premature end of the manga, which was still very well managed, I have to say, leaving room to an imaginary continuation, being only the start of the true journey. The biggest lesson that I feel like I can extract from this story is that fear is not the answer to the unknown. Actually, it's ignorance that we should be scared of, and all that comes with it, especially when exploited by more educated individuals, for their interests and their interests only. Or how dangerous religion and even technology can be when in the wrong hands. In short, education, mourning, is the best weapon to fight ignorance. Night.